Hey everybody, welcome back to the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Implementation video series. This video is going to specifically talk about the Symbols Manager. So the Symbols Manager is going to contain all of your schematic symbols as well as your line diagram symbols um, and your connection labels as well as you can see here on the screen. Now, when you're creating or editing a symbol, the one thing I absolutely recommend doing with these different symbol types that we have here is there's a lot of symbols in the software, a lot of default symbols in here, but maybe you want to create your own custom symbol. Well, you can very well go ahead and create new, but what I recommend doing is finding a symbol that closely represents what you have already, and you can simply copy and paste that symbol. Now, how do you know which one is the copy? Well, instead of using thumbnail view, you can use list mode. And when you go to list mode, you'll notice that there is a description, the name that you can see under the thumbnail, and there's also the name that SQL recognizes it by, which is EW underscore umpty squat there. So the one with the plus one is the copy. You can leave it as plus one, or what I recommend doing is coming up with a new name. That way it's easily I re recognize that that's the copy that you created and you're gonna continue working with it. Once you've created that copy, now you're ready to edit that symbol. Now inside that particular symbol, there's a lot of information in here that you may or may not want to manipulate. On the left hand side, we can see a list of all the attributes being used inside this symbol, as well as the circuits and terminals that are inside of this particular symbol. On the right hand side, we have the properties of this. Again, there's the SQL name, the name that SQL recognizes it by. I cannot edit it now. It's grayed out, but I can change this. So maybe I want to change from connector pins left and I want to uh, add something like ground or something to it um, going forward. If you remember from the previous video, I can also go in and I can change what library I want this in. So in this case here, instead of onboard, I'm going to just put it in my user library. I do have the ability to change this from metric to imperial. But again, I copied this for a reason because I like some of the settings in this particular symbol. So I may or may not want to change a lot of the information in here. Additionally, if this symbol is specific to one particular manufacturer, I can go ahead and add the manufacturer here. So that way, as soon as I drop that symbol in, it's automatically going to add that manufacturer part to it. Now, with a four pin connector symbol like this, a very generic symbol, I may not want to put a manufacturer part in here. But if it's some very specific VFD, um, from whatever manufacturer, well then maybe it makes sense to add that. You also can change the route here. So if you remember from the previous video, we talked about the different classifications and we can edit those classifications. So in the case of a connector, I can change that connector route at the top level for all my connectors to be X or CN or J or P, whatever jack or plug, whatever it may be. But maybe for this specific symbol, I don't want it to be X or CN. Maybe I want it to say PL for plug or something like that. So I can in change this and this takes precedence, the hierarchy, this mark root takes precedence over the classification one. I can also define terminal types, a terminal strip symbol as well. And do I want to display my connection points? I personally like to display my connection points so I can see where the wire is specifically connecting to. But if I turn this off, I will not get, and we'll see when I open up a schematic in a little while, I will not get the red dot or blue dot or pink dot, whatever I want to set it to in my project uh, to show up on that symbol where this orientation is right here. So within this particular symbol, I have four circuits and one terminal inside of every circuit. It may make sense to do this. In some instances, I may want one circuit with four terminals or two circuits with two terminals each. 
So this is where it comes down to understanding the manufacturer part that I'm trying to create or work with to define the symbol a little bit better. That way, everything lines up correctly from the manufacturer part information into the symbol. You don't have to do that. I recommend doing that. Whenever I do training, whenever I talk to customers or prospects or any users out there, the one term I use all the time is garbage in, garbage out. The better, the more information, the more robust and the better information I add now, the better the information is going to be on the back end when I generate, generate my reports. Also, I don't have to come back and mess with this symbol again if I've set it up correctly the first time. The one other piece of information I would recommend doing with my symbols is making sure that my insertion point is set up to match my first connection point on my symbol. In some cases, some people like to put that insertion point way out here. But if my grid is, is off or my, my connection point is not set up correctly on my symbol, then it may not allow me to snap the wire to the correct spot. So I always recommend setting my insertion point to pin one inside of my symbol. So once I have my symbol set up, and I like the way it looks, I can use my drawing tools or my modify uh, tab to manipulate the actual graphic on here as well. But once everything is set up the way I want, this is a DWG and I do have to save it. This is saved. If you remember from video one, I talked about the program data folder. You do have to save this file. It will save to that particular folder. Whenever I'm working on a schematic in the project, that information is being written back and forth to the SQL database live. So I do not have to constantly hit the save button, but when I'm working inside of a DWG, I do. If I go to closes, if I make a, if I make a minor change to this, it's gonna ask me to save it anyway. But if I'm trying to edit the symbol and then look at the schematic and update it and make sure that things are looking correctly before I close this, then it makes sense to constantly go back and save it, check the change, save it, check the change. So that was a quick overview of accessing our symbols, first creating a copy or creating a new symbol from the symbols manager, being able to edit it, understanding some of the information uh, that is available to you when working with a symbol. And then of course, saving that symbol off for future use. So I hope this helps. Next video, we will probably jump into our footprints and talk a little bit more about those symbols. Thanks for watching. See you next time.